Guys, I'm actually oversharing so much, so if you know me personally, please just like click away now. I feel like these are questions I would never have felt brave enough to ask either of my parents, so this is why I'm telling you guys all the information here. I feel like I haven't chatted to you guys in a while like this. Obviously my last vlog was my solo trip away, which was literally insane. So go and check that out if you haven't already. So today I'm gonna to be answering questions you're too afraid to ask your mom or your parents. Okay, so let's get straight into it. So my first question is, does your first time hurt? This is gonna sound bad, but I'm gonna say yes to this question. It does hurt, but there are ways to make it hurt less. So if you're an adult and you make the decision to sleep with someone for the first time, it can really help if you trust that person, you'll be more relaxed, and is much less likely to hurt as much. I also think it's worth noting that it's not as bad as everyone makes out, so I don't wanna like scare anyone, but I would say it's very normal to bleed and hurt a little. Okay, so my next question is how to know if someone fancies you. Number one, eye contact. If someone, when you're chatting to them, has got a smile on their face, they're trying to create eye contact with you, that is like my number one go-to to know that like somebody fancies me. The next obvious tell would be if they constantly find ways to like be near you. So say you say that you're gonna be somewhere and they end up doing the same thing, they end up being there as well. They constantly find ways like in, say you're in a classroom setting, they come and sit next to you, like they want to be in your space. The other factor is like physical touch. So if somebody's like, you know, hugging you, rubbing your arm as they're talking to you, that sounds like really over the top, but you know, whenever they have the chance or possibility, they're trying to make that like physical connection, that's definitely a sign that they like you. Lastly, if they're engaged in conversation, so I'm sure everyone here has been in a conversation with someone where their eyes are just going everywhere and they're not really listening to you, they're looking everywhere around the room, but if you find that person who's actually really engaged with what you're saying, they're listening, they're nodding, asking you questions, that person like either likes you or fancies you. I think especially as a queer woman, it's very hard to tell that someone likes me as a friend or that they like me as more than a friend, but I'll do another video on that, so if you have any questions in terms of queer dating, please drop them down below. Okay, so next question, what is a normal age to lose your virginity? I love this question because I think I wondered this so much when I was growing up. I was always worrying. I was hearing all these stories in the classroom from my friends, like, oh, I've slept with someone at this age. Oh, I've slept with someone, you know, and I was thinking I still haven't. But I think there's literally no normal age. There's no normal. Obviously, like if you looked at all of the data, you would say, okay, right, this is the age that most people are having sex by. But I think it's completely up to you. It's whenever you feel safe, whenever you feel confident and comfortable to do so. If you find someone that you trust, then that is the right time but if not do not listen to your friends don't give in to peer pressure all of your friends might give you chat but like you know when is the right time for you and you don't need to be rushed by anyone okay so my next taboo question is can I have sex on my period you can absolutely have sex on your period if you are having heterosexual sex you still need to use protection as you can still get pregnant during this time I think it's like a myth that a lot of people think that when you're on your period you cannot get pregnant so definitely definitely still use protection I would also recommend like laying down like a dark towel or something like that because washing white sheets is it's gonna be tricky. I have actually heard that having sex on your period also helps period cramps so I don't know if anyone else has found this, but let me know in the comments if you've also found this. So next question is how do I put a tampon in? This is such an interesting question because I remember when I first started my period, I was at secondary school, I was in year nine, so it was quite late compared to all of the other girls, but I think I think I, you know, I wasn't really eating enough at that age and that can definitely affect like when your period starts. So when I first started my period, I had some tampons that my mum had given me and they were literally just the little tampons that you get like without the applicator. At this point, I hadn't had sex with anyone. I hadn't had any, like nothing, nothing had gone up there, if you know what I mean. And for me, putting a tampon in was literally just the most painful experience. It just wasn't going in. So I used pads, which I found a lot easier. I also now use, and this wasn't around when I was at school, but something called Moddy Bodies, which is a brand, but they're basically period pants that actually work and don't smell. So if you guys want to know about them, then let me know in the comments and I will tag a link or something because they are really, really good if, you, if you're someone who doesn't want to wear tampons. But then, as I got older, I found out about, this like might be the most obvious thing, but I found out about tampons with applicators and oh my god, it literally changed my life. An applicator I found so much easier and when you use the applicator, like you kind of just have to angle it. So if you angle as you're putting the tampon in towards like, don't just like try and put it straight in, kind of angle it like back towards, towards your backbone, like towards your coccyx it will go in so much easier and it's gonna be so much less painful. Highly recommend that the Tampax applicator tampons are elite. Okay, so my next question is, do you have any feminine hygiene tips? Okay, that was really annoying. My camera literally just ran out of storage and I had to just delete loads of videos of me and my girlfriend that were really cute. Anyways, I love you guys, so I'm gonna continue the video. But I take my feminine hygiene so seriously. So I love like sexy underwear sets, like that is like 
my thing but you will never catch me wearing them day to day. All that kind of like lace mesh is not very good for the pH levels down there. So I 100% will always wear like cotton, like essentially like the M&S granny pants. That is what you will catch me wearing every single day. They have to be 100% cotton. So much better for your downstairs area so that you can actually let your vagina breathe. I always shower every day, to be honest, sometimes in the morning and in the evening. And I always use like a sensitive soap, like on the outside, you know, like you don't be washing inside because it's self cleaning like on the inside. So you just want to wash the outside with a sensitive soap. Do not use shower gel, like you are literally, number one, it's probably gonna sting because it's gonna be some tindly shower gel that's gonna hurt down there. And two, it's probably gonna disrupt the pH levels and give you that funky smell. The other tip would be to sleep either naked or in like loose clothing so like you can let the area breathe overnight. I also just wanna make a point that having discharge every day is completely normal as a woman. The vagina is self-cleansing and that is its way of doing its thing. That being said, because discharge is normal every day, it is normal to wear clean underwear every single day. I've heard stories of boys wearing the same boxes like for a week. I mean, that doesn't sound very hygienic in itself, but as girls, I would definitely recommend changing your underwear like every single day. Okay, so my next question is, is it normal to not have boobs at the age of 12? I get DM these kind of questions all the time on Instagram. If you wanna check out my Instagram, I'll add it here. I talk a lot about fitness, body positivity, and girl talk on there so definitely give me a follow if that's your thing it's so normal for everyone to mature at different ages so my girlfriend was literally nine when she had boobs and a bum and like she matured very young I literally was a stick insect until I was 18 and then I remember coming into sit form and all the girls were like oh Millie you actually you're kind of curvy like you've got boobs and I was like yeah they literally like over the summer like I finally went through that puberty where I had obviously I started my period in year nine but I didn't get boobs until like yeah what is it when you're in sit form year 12 I think which is quite late but that is normal like, like me and my girlfriend both matured at completely different stages like my advice would be don't compare yourself to your friends because I was definitely at that age comparing myself to my friends and thinking oh my god I'm never gonna have boobs even if you don't, that is also completely normal. And you'd be surprised how many people find it super sexy, having boobs, having no boobs. Like it literally doesn't matter as much as you think it does. Okay, so my next question is how do you get rid of nipple hairs? As a girl with very dark body hair, I obviously get very dark nipple hairs. And for some reason, a lot grow there. I don't know why. They do. I've literally tried everything. I tried shaving, waxing. The number one thing for me that stops them from growing back so fast has definitely been plucking. I would recommend plucking your nipple hairs if you want to. You don't have to remove the hair there at all, but for me, it makes me feel more confident. And I've definitely found just grabbing your pair of tweezers occasionally is the best thing for me and that will just like keep them from growing back as fast as shaving or waxing. I also think that waxing is a little bit harsh for that area because it's obviously a very sensitive area. Next question is how do you manage your period pains? So my period pains are literally awful. Previously I would always just like push through the pain and see how much pain my body could take which is probably the worst thing you can do but I don't know I feel like it's just like girl math like let yourself go through as much pain as possible see what you can take see how strong you are like it's a bad idea. I don't recommend doing that. I've now, since meeting my girlfriend, like this is, might be like the most basic thing that everyone does, but I didn't know about this. Hot water bottles literally help so much. I think it's to do with the fact that they help the blood flow in this area, because obviously when you're having a period, like your blood is clotting in your uterus. So I definitely recommend grabbing a hot water bottle, really, really helps with cramps. I, I've also found that like mixing, I don't know what the American equivalent is, but in the UK it's paracetamol which helps with the pain and then ibuprofen or like Nurofen helps with the like inflammation around there. So yeah, mixing those two together has really, really helped me. And then just drinking a load of water, I think that helps your body process things anyway. Drinking lots of water when I'm on my period always makes me feel so much better. Okay, so my next question is how do you overcome social anxiety and make people like you? I feel like this question needs a whole video in itself because I have so many tips for this. I used to be such an insecure person and I would have so much social anxiety like talking to someone new. I'm now super confident I'll walk into a room with my shoulders back and I'll be the first to chat to anyone. One of the easiest things that I started doing is just smiling more. If you see how people react to dogs for example, like dogs are always happy to see humans. Like that interaction is always like Feels, fills me with serotonin. Like, they're always wagging, they're always happy to see you. If you then take that example to people and you imagine like when you meet someone, they've got a smile on their face, they're happy to see you, they're chatty, you're so much more likely to connect with them, so much more likely to like them. It's literally the smallest things to make the biggest differences. My next tip would be to offer help. So for example, like I was at a concert recently, I didn't know anyone there, I did like a solo date there, I, I've done a vlog on my TikTok. You can check out my TikTok here. I do lots of things on fitness, body positivity and girl talk over there too. So please do give me a follow 
if that's something that interests you. So I went by myself on a solo date to a concert and lots of the girls were taking photos. My natural reaction in that scenario was to offer help and obviously after you've offered help, you've taken those photos, that is like such a good conversation starter. Because people are so much more likely to like you and help you if you help them too. Another tip for making people like you is definitely don't be afraid of compliments. So if you think a girl looks amazing in a dress, absolutely tell her. I think this only works if the compliment is genuine and sincere, obviously. I think people can definitely sense if you're not being genuine and if you're being fake towards them and that's gonna make them resent you. But if you are being sincere, authentic, and you're being yourself and you give someone a compliment, they are 10 times more likely to like you if you're the person to make them feel better about themselves. My last tip is don't take rejection to heart. Sometimes it is nothing to do with you. I always try and show empathy when I'm meeting new people. If I'm talking to them, I'm smiling, I'm being chatty, I'm complimenting them and I'm not getting the same energy back, I just have to accept that a lot of the time that is nothing to do with me. They probably had something else go on in their life that I have no idea about. Or I just try and learn from that rejection and change the way I interact with people the next time. So the next question is how to shave down there. I've already done an entire YouTube video on this, so I'm gonna link this down below. So definitely watch that after if you want an explanation of how to shave with no razor bumps. Like I'm a super, super hairy girl. It's something I've literally struggled with my entire childhood, through my teenage years, and even now, I do struggle with dark body hair. If I can sum it up really quickly, I would say use a conditioner as your shaving cream and then use a five blade razor. You have to use a five blade razor. I usually use a new one every single time because my hairs are just so thick. Like I have maybe like three or four hairs growing out of each pore. Like it is literally like, imagine a hairy gorilla's legs, that is my legs. Which is totally normal, all of us are different and our uniqueness makes us beautiful, but for me, I just feel more sexy when I have shaved legs. Like sometimes I let my armpit hair grow out, but my legs are just, I like feeling smooth. I like getting into a clean bed, like with smooth legs. Like it's literally the best feeling. In terms of how much to shave off down there, it is completely up to you. It's completely a personal preference. So if you've got someone pressurizing you to shave or to not shave, don't listen to them. Do whatever makes you feel confident and sexy. That is the number one thing. And don't be like pressurized. If your partner has a preference for something, you've always got to go with your gut, your body, and it's your choice. In terms of how long I would leave it between shaving, I would say your everybody's hair grows at different paces. I have to shave down there at least once a week. And my hair definitely grows back faster than in a week. But I let it grow to like the length of a rice grain, if that makes sense. So that you actually have some hair to shave away. Otherwise, if you just keep shaving, you're going to end up getting all those like red dots that irritated shaving rash, like ingrown hairs, you've got to let the hair like actually come through. So that brings this video to an end. I just want to highlight, this is just my advice from my experience in life. I'm not an expert on anything, but if you did enjoy this video, please do give it a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe. I'm going to be releasing a video every week, so I can't wait to see you guys next week. Bye!